So at first it was April 2020, then it was pushed back to November 2020, and now finally on the 30th of September 2021, No Time to Die has been unleashed on us cinema goers. It is safe to say this is probably the biggest film to be released thus far since the pandemic began and what a film we're going to delve into. Daniel Craig's fifth and final outing as James Bond goes out with an absolute bang. I'm Lucas, you're watching Reb Noise Screen 1 and this is the review that you've been waiting for. Shaken, not stirred of course. So just to warn people there may be some spoilers ahead as obviously this is a new film just released here in the United Kingdom and I'm aware that in other territories it's not been released yet but we were so excited here at Rev Noise Screen 1 we just had to do something for the occasion. Now obviously the Daniel Craig era of the Bond films has been met with some mixed success. Obviously his debut feature Casino Royale met with pretty good critical acclaim. However follow ups such as Quantum of Solace and Spectre were more mixed on the front. But it's definitely agreed upon that Skyfall is most likely the best film that he's done. Until now that is. Now I'm not going to lie and say to you this is an easy watch and for many reasons some of them I'm not going to get into in this video guys I really want people to enjoy this cinema experience. As Daniel Craig said recently when he was on the Graham Norton show he did say that he really really wanted this film to be released in the cinemas and I can absolutely see why. Obviously we're so used to these massive set pieces when it comes to Bond you know, over the years and I really felt that the um, Day of the Dead scene from uh, Spectre actually would be hard to top However, I think they have done so and then some in this one. Whether it's the driving scenes, the hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes, you know, whether it's the good old-fashioned Bond gun battle scenes. I think this film has surpassed itself and anything else in its genre when it comes to this level of effects and these action scenes. They were, honest to God, amazing. And obviously I watched it, I was fortunate enough to watch it um, at one of the best screens in the country, that's Picture House Central. Um, their screen one there in 4K um, in a massive uh, screen which is how this film should be seen so I'm so glad too that it didn't end up on a streaming platform as I think that wasn't the way to go. Now we are introduced to a new 00 agent played by Lashana Lynch in this and there is some confusion as to what goes on. This is the part that I'm going to spoil so please take your headphones off or put your hands in the video if you don't want to hear this bit. She has been assigned the number 007. This obviously follows the events of Spectre with um, James Bond retiring um, from the service and so the number was reassigned. However there is a twist to be had later on with this number and I will leave it up to you guys to go and see it uh, to find out what that is. I think it's played very well to be fair. I know obviously some people are calling this you know quote unquote woke bond or whatever but I think the way they handle this is actually quite splendid because they do just treat it as like well it's just a number it's just a number you know James Bond's still the character Daniel Craig's still the lead actor um you know there's no there's not a female bond or a black bond yet <laughs> um but they treat this very very well I feel and I feel that people it does the movie service and the character justice too so I think that's very important um, also back is Ben Whishaw as Q and of course the great Ralph Fiennes as M or Mallory and he's very very involved in this plot and so it's very interesting to see a different side to the M character as we're so used to seeing M as prim and proper and not really part of the main story but here he is. The villain of the piece is played by Oscar winner of course Rami Malek and this is, this is weird because I remember this being his first casting after he won the Oscar you know, of course, for um, Bohemian Rhapsody. And obviously it's been a long time waiting since that film's been released. And I think he plays the Bond villain very, very well here. I think that it's a very chilling performance. It's a very, almost like Javier Bardem's, just really, just ooh, really creepy um, kind of thing. And at the heart of it too, is a returning Bond girl. Yes, we haven't made this up. A Bond girl returns. Um, and that is, of course, Madeline, who's very central to the plot too. So there's lots going on in this film. And I think the ensemble cast really, really helped this film very, very well. You know, I think there's some great dialogue between a lot of the characters. I think it's interesting seeing Agents' home lives in this film. We delve really, really personally into these characters for the first time, probably in any Bond film, I'd say. 
you know, and I guess that's the thing, you know, there's, it is a two hour, 40 minute runtime, you know, for this movie, which obviously some people will grimace at and be a bit like, you know, including myself, to be fair, as I'm not the biggest fan of long, long movies. However, I feel here it's justified, as we are seeing kind of this whole saga that started in Spectre, and well, really through Skyfall into Spectre, um, and now into this final film, you know, really come to light and come to its own kind of fruition. I think what we're seeing here with these characters is we're building a team around Bond. Obviously, I think James Bond's always been like a solo kind of guy, and I get that. I get this. I get that. Obviously, there's fans that want to see that, but I think going forward, we're looking into having other characters that people want to see, and I think that's not a bad thing, you know, all in. And it allows them to have the creative freedom to do stuff with these other characters because James Bond, you know, I feel and many other people will feel he's very he's very rigid as a character because when he was written he was written people need to remember James Bond the character was written over 70 years ago now so you know he's not young by any means he's not a modern character but these new characters coming through are very modern are very um, you know with the time and I think that's the thing which people are somewhat annoyed about but I think end of the day you know we are living in 2021 we have to embrace the fact that, you know, we have so many different types of characters that we can put in these movies. And I think that's what, you know, the production team here are choosing to do. And I think Bond's legacy going forward will be very, very different. But anyway, back from that tangent, though, there's so much good in this movie. You know, it's just such a kind of just a wonder to watch. You know, there's always something going on. We're seeing a very, very darker side of Bond as the character... Um, has aged and we've seen the stress and the toll that all the events obviously from Spectre have taken. Now again this is one of my second spoiler of the video. We do also see a returning Christoph Waltz um, as of course Blofeld. Um, he makes a kind of extended cameo appearance in the movie but does something very very important in this film um, to do with Spectre. So it is a kind of rewarding experience for fans who want to see that kind of payoff come out. And, you know, it's handled really, really, really well. I think the direction here is absolutely beautiful, you know, throughout this feature film. Now, of course, the elephant in the room um, that is going to be covered, I'm sure, the most out of any of the things we've already spoken about is the death of James Bond. Now, this is obviously a controversial thing to be discussing as, you know, it's a character we all know and love and I didn't see it coming. You know, I felt that the scene was just, it was just done so well and you really, really feel for the character um, given the, the main focus of the, of the plot of the movie. But seeing James Bond's demise, it did feel right in this context. I think, I think it was handled well. It was, it was the right time um, for the character to, to, to die. Obviously, where this leaves the films going forward, we're not too sure. Like, obviously, do we have to start going back in time, I guess, get a younger Bond in? You know, or is just the character done and maybe they're going to move on to the double O kind of series? You know, I'm really, really not too sure. It's funny, it's kind of, I'm still processing it as I speak, really, because that scene just blew me away. And I think everyone in the cinema kind of, we were just like, what? Like, how have they done this? You know, I think I think reception to it's going to be mixed, obviously, it's, and I do await seeing what people think of it online. But I think personally, it was handled really, really well, and it was the right time, <laughs> if you pardon the pun, for the character to die. And I think if Daniel Craig, if that's what how he wanted this character to kind of be written out then that's fair enough. And perhaps he might know more about the casting of the next Bond than he's letting on. You know, perhaps if the casting of the next Bond is a younger Bond, it will explain why we're going to have to obviously go back in time and potentially obviously recast some of the other roles, which would be kind of heartbreaking in a way because, you know, we would obviously would want to see, you know, some of the smaller characters kind of return, but that wouldn't be possible, I guess, if we go back in time. I'm really, really not too sure where this goes now. But, you know, I'd like to say that you know, as a massive Bond fan throughout the years, although his run's been shaky, I do think this last kind of trilogy, he really came into his own. And I'm really, really going to miss seeing Daniel Craig as James Bond on the big screen. And I'm sure many of the Bond fans will do too. Whoever they cast next, whether it is um, a person on the long, long list of people that people 
want to be cast as a character, or whether it's someone different, whether it's someone new, whether it is a person of colour, whether it is a woman, whoever this person is, they've got big, big shoes to fill. So yeah, look, that's, that's just my thoughts, of course. And, you know, in terms of giving this film a star rating, like, you know, I've had to have a think. Obviously, I, I weighed up what I said about Black Widow. I weighed up also what I've said about other films that I reviewed. And I felt that this film truly, and this might be a soundbite, this film is truly the film of the year. This film is a masterpiece. This film is just a joy to watch. It contains so much emotion from the get-go. And I think this film will be the Bond film that's talked about for a long, long time to come. And so that's why I'm going to hand it out something which I didn't think I would hand out yet this soon into this. But I'm going to give it the full five stars. It's just a phenomenal film and one which needs to be seen. Just get yourself out there to the cinema, the biggest screen possible that you can. See it in IMAX, see it in 4DX, feel and enjoy and live every single moment. This is a cinema movie. Please don't wait for this to come onto uh, you know, one of the streaming services or onto TV in a couple of years' time. Please go out and see this, support this film, and get cinema back up and running. Until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I've been Lucas, this is Red Noise Screen 1, Tara for now.